Hey friends, welcome! Let me introduce you to Joy of Code 2.0, completely rewritten in SwellKit. So let me just refresh it so I can show some animations. Really nice stagger effect, which is sweet. So I really wanted a different site and I really love SwellKit, so I started using it. I'm using server-side rendering before I was using Next.js with static site generation. There really isn't a Next.js versus SwellKit here because they're completely different. There's one being completely static and the other server-side rendered. So why do I want server-side rendered? I really want server-side rendering so I'm more motivated to write and release posts because it's really soul-crushing when you have to make a simple update and it takes like five minutes to propagate and you don't even know if the build is going to fail, right? So I can just simply update whatever I want and it's going to show immediately. Uh, this works by using GitHub as a CMS and I'm going to show you more in detail how that works. So here is the site, let me just scroll to the bottom so I can remind you with immortal words of Bob Ross that talent is a pursued interest and anything that you're willing to practice you can do. So let me just show you, this is the same as before, so I'm using Markdown, so you can edit it in GitHub. So let's go to the Swellhead UI component library post. I want you to notice this slick transition. So here is the movie mode when we pass the title. Ah, it turns dark, really nice. So everything works as before. Everything is nice, I tightened up the typography, so you can have an easier time reading things. So yeah, that's really pretty much it, but I spend a lot of time on it. And here are the preferences, which is a new thing. You can choose from many different themes and you can even set the reading size, the reading length, reading line height, and you can even use a font for dyslexia if you have difficulty reading. And if you mess something up, you can just reset the settings. And that's really it. And here's the categories you can navigate to. But yeah, let me just show you the benefits of using something server-side rendering. Since I just interact with the GitHub API to update the post, I built a simple CMS using SwellKit. So here it is. And for example, we can find the SwellKit one. Let's see, where is the headless? Here it is. So we can click on that and this is going to open the editor, which is really awesome. And I spent a lot of time working on this because most of my time is <laughs> spent formatting text and etc. And I really want a live preview on the site and to ship out posts quick, right? And this is really awesome. And I'm really pleased it worked out like this. If you're interested, let me know. I might make a tutorial series on this because this is really awesome. I'm using VS Code in the browser or the Monaco editor, and this is how I get this smooth editing experience. So yeah, uh, here is the repository you can visit, of course, and here I just released it a couple of hours ago. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I was sweating. I was like, what is going to break? But everything works fine. People are reporting some issues, but the site seems to be working fine. And here you can see what is Joy of Code. I changed that. So I want to encourage first time contributors. So here it's at the top. And I have a new thing to use issues to find answers. So the thing I hate about most YouTube videos is not the fault of the creators, but things get outdated quick, etc. And then it's like just frustration when you run into something that's already outdated. Then you have to hunt uh, down YouTube comments or whatever. A direct message the creator of the video right but i found a better solution and that's issues so for more complicated videos and posts right or maybe for each one i'm not sure the format yet i'm just going to open an issue and inside people can help each other right because i really have limited amount of time in the day so i can't respond to everything so i hope the community is going to take over here and I'm going to try to do my best, of course. So for example, if we go here, let's see what, what do I know that has breaking changes. It's SwellKit, right? So let's see SwellKit for beginners, right? And if you find some issue in the YouTube video, you can just go here to the issues. You can submit it. I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to update this. So the other person that comes after you can just read this. So you can see here, I already have some notes that's breaking and this informs me to update the post, right? And this is really an awesome way to contribute to open source and to help me out. Okay, so thank you very much in this in the future. So let's go back to the repository. Actually, let me just click this so we can go here and let me just talk about the stack if you're interested. So the technologies used are SvelteKit for the front end with server-side rendering and pre-rendering static pages, which don't need server-side rendering. I'm using the GitHub REST API to manage content. So GitHub basically serves as a content management system. Let me know if you're interested in this. I can show you how to make a simple but powerful blog if you want. 
So the editor uses also Svelkit for the frontend and the Monacore editor, which powers VS Code, is the editor to manage content also using the GitHub API. And the posts are stored inside the post folder and are used to build a page using the GitHub API inside the data, which serves like a quasi database, right? Because we're keeping this cheap, right, boys? No cost. <laughs> Yeah, and this is stored inside post.json if you're curious. And I'm using Vercel, and to avoid redeploying for everything, I found out here is uh, the ignore build step you can specify, so it doesn't rebuild for every single thing, just when I change the source files, etc. And this is really nice. So for testing, uh, this is a lie because I haven't done any tests yet, so I just wanted to ship it, so psh, don't say it to anyone, right? And for the analytics, I use Google Analytics. Oh, I know it's controversial, but don't freak out. I have all the spooky things turned off and really you can't beat Google Analytics because even the other analytic tools are so expensive, it's like insane. There isn't like an intermediate level for prosumers, it's just you're an internet peasant or you're a professional. It's like insanely expensive and Google Analytics is cheap and it just shows me what I'm interested about which is which pages are visited and that's it. It really doesn't track anything else about you. For the newsletter, I absolutely love button down when I remember to send one, right? Uh, for the post, I use Superbase, so I just fetch that from a database and that gets also incremented. And I use HTTP caching, so it's all more manageable. And for the social share images, I use a project I also worked on, which is social share images. I'm going to be making a video on this one because it's really awesome, so I don't have to go into Figma or whatever and make a social share image for every post, it just get auto-generated for me. So yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the project. I hope you learned something. So yeah, thank you for listening to my rambling. And if you find any breaking change, submit an issue or give me your feedback if you want. And that's it. So thank you and catch you later.